All right, let's get on to our last player of the day. Going from two rookies to a guy who's 33 years old, Ryan Tannehill, whose ZLF startup ADP currently is QB24. But he's been a QB1 ever since he took over from Marcus Mariota. He was QB4 uh, in 2019 after he took over from Mariota and QB7 in 2020. And he was QB12 last year, even though his seemed to have a pretty down year. He uh, was buoyed by seven rushing touchdowns, which he seems to just do every year now, it looks like. But then the Titans draft, Malik Willis in the third round. I know what John's going to say about Malik Willis because we, <laughs> me and him, have talked a good bit about this. But, you know, I, I'm not sure it's a threat really till maybe 2024. Ryan Tannehill's contract is not easy to get out in, until then uh, to begin with. And I think Malik Willis needs a lot of time to learn. John, what do we think about this price on Ryan Tannehill? So I was getting, to, and I'm a Titans fan, uh, just to be very clear about this, uh, but I was getting to the point where I was almost all out on Ryan Tannehill. I had lowered, like I, I, I run a trade calculator on my Patreon and, and uh, I had lowered him down to a, like a 100, which is exactly like a back end first round pick, you know, like pretty low. I would bet most people probably would have had him, you know, a little higher than that. I have now ever since they drafted Malik Willis, I have raised Ryan Tannehill in my in my trade calculator. Um I I don't see Malik Willis like you said. Maybe 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 I'm wrong about Malik. It's going to be in like 2 years. It's not going to be this year, it's not going to be next year. It I I think this actually clears the way for Tannehill to be the starter for the next 2 years at the very least and then, you know, we have no idea what's going to happen at that point. Um you know, last year was not great. And losing Derrick Henry is, we see how important he is for that team. Um, but the biggest thing that we see, we see with Tannehill is in the last three seasons before last year, he had a, like a 6 or 7% touchdown rate. Like he was extremely efficient. Even his last year in uh, Miami, he had a 6.2% touchdown rate. Then he comes over to Tennessee, he has a 7.7% rate, which is never going to, you know, happen again like it was way too high but then the next year he's a 6.9 percent uh rate and then last year he has a four percent touchdown rate you know like something's not <laughs> one of these things is yeah. not like the other and so right. uh, i everything that happened with aj brown julio jones being hurt obviously derrick henry being hurt and, and them having to rely so much on him even before that because of the wide receiver injuries you see it you know in the numbers for ryan Tanhill, and so i think that it, just by looking at that, you would expect a little like good regression, you know, regression to the mean, and uh, and things would be better for him anyway. Um, yes, he has a rookie wide receiver in Traylon Burks instead of AJ Brown, but they're kind of similar players, you know. So it, it, I think regardless, he's going to be better. And like I said, I, I don't see Malik Willis as being uh, a threat anytime soon. And I mean, the you were talking about the contract situation. I mean, he he's owed a crap load of money this year, and then he still has a twenty million or nineteen million dollar dead cap next year. So it's not like they're just going to be like, oh yeah, you know, it's nineteen mil. Who cares or whatever? Especially for a Malik Willis that is not prepared to be to be an NFL QB anyway. But I I mean to like put an actual number on it. I have him as my QB twenty now, and I think you had said he was QB twenty four on uh, right. DLF. So, you know, like I don't have them substantially higher, but, you know, really when you're getting into that range, four spots is actually a pretty big difference, you know? Yeah, I, I've got him at our, uh, QB 21, so I'm right there with you that, like, at this price, I am interested. Skyler, I want to hear what you have to say, and I want to know, what do you think about the loss of A.J. Brown for Ryan Tannehill? Um, the loss of A.J. Brown. I think if Derrick Henry is healthy, that's the thing that I'm concerned with most because his splits without A.J. Brown the years prior were, were just fine. He really just struggled when they had no way to establish the run in there, and then he, he flourishes when he's in play action. And he gets more opportunities for free rollouts and uh, scrambles into the end zone, and you, they really didn't have that same ability to run those types of plays without Derrick Henry. I mean, he had stretches last year where his, his RB1 was Deonta Foreman, his wide receiver one was Nick. Nick Westbrook Akine, like right. well, why you, you right. think why do you think his efficiency went down? Like who's who who was he hitting? He looked absolutely hornswoggled in some games last year. Like he looked frazzled. He had multiple turnovers in multiple games. And I really don't blame him. I mean, the team still finishes the number one seed. He's owed $40 million next year. I don't see them moving on anytime soon. So as far as being secure, I don't think you have to worry about it. RB24 or QB24. Yeah, I'm fine with him at that price. He just he falls into that zone of players where 
you you feel really gross moving a, a first round pick for him but he's probably not getting sold for a second round pick. So really I'd just be sitting in my rookie drafts. If you really need a quarterback, I'd be waiting until Johan Dotson is gone. And then I'd probably be okay trading any pick thereafter for Ryan Tannehill. People going crazy for, for Kenny Pickett. I have Kenny Pickett and Ryan Tannehill right next to each other. And that's probably too aggressive on Kenny Pickett, just being him with the Steelers. So if you're, if you're looking for a quarterback, instead of drafting Kenny Pickett, same thing we told you with Kirk cousins and Derek Carr in that episode, like, you can probably get Ryan Tannehill and a, fir- and a first for trading that pick that's pick it in a second. Like that probably gets done. So um, I would just play it that way. And if you can pick him up for a second, like Tannehill, I'm not probably targeting him individually, but I'm going to go inquire about Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, Carson Wentz, and whichever one I can buy for the cheapest. If I have like a 203, a 204, a 205, I'll send that pick for all of them. And one of the managers in your league might just take it, especially if it's a QB three or four. So that's why I fall on Ryan Tan. I'm not overly excited. He's going to outproduce his ADP. Like wherever he goes, if he's 24, he's going to finish higher than 24. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's a little different with Dynasty. I think he'll probably go closer to quarterback 15 in 15, 16, 17 in redraft. And he'll probably outperform that ADP as well. So uh, from that standpoint, if you're looking for QB2 production as a fringe QB1, when it's all said and done, he's probably that guy. It's not. It's not very inspiring. It doesn't feel too great. But if you're looking for a quarterback, he's the type of player I'd at least inquire about. But I would not be overpaying for 34-year-old Ryan Tannehill coming off his least efficient season in like four years. (laughs) Here, I've got the trade for you, okay? Now, as I mentioned, Ryan Tannehill is QB 24 in DLF startup ADP. QB 25 is Malik Willis. (laughs) That's ridiculous. That's repulsive. Maybe if you just drafted Malik Willis, send him over for Ryan Tannehill. Maybe it gets done. What do we think? Yeah. I, I I was actually going to say that. I mean, now I I I cannot. It's just against my brand, so I cannot legally draft Malik Willis and then <laughs> trade him. Um, and so like I can't do it. But I'm sure other listeners, you know, have drafted Malik Willis somewhere. And if you got him at like a two hundred six price or whatever, and all you have to do is add a third, then you just did two hundred six and a third for Ryan Tannehill, and that's when you know now bad. you're you're profiting. That's how you do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, any of those guys really like. Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, uh, you know, even like you could probably, I would have like I, my last rookie draft started this weekend and uh, Kenny Pickett went at 102. Now that, that was by far the earliest that he had gone in any of my rookie drafts. I'm not saying that's the norm. It was a home league. So I mean, it's definitely not the norm, but you know, that's the whole point about rookie drafts is they're all different. Um, mm-hmm. You can probably get Ryan Tannehill plus for Kenny Pickett. Like maybe, I mean, it, it's not a guarantee, but there's a decent chance that you can probably get a little bit added on to a Ryan Tannehill from a K- Kenny Pickett. So like, I'd really be just about besides Matt Corral. Uh, if you guys know me, I'm, I'm a huge Matt Corral fan. I'm not adding to Matt Corral to get Ryan Tannehill, uh, but just about any of the other QBs in this draft, I'd definitely be looking to, to move off and, and go ahead and get Tannehill. Like I said, I mean, maybe it's just my hatred for Malik. But I feel so much more comfortable about Ryan Tannehill's, uh, you know, like uh, prospects going forward than uh, than I did a month ago, you know, two months ago. Yeah, it's exactly the range I was talking about, though. Like Malik Willis is going two or five, two or six, and I said if you have any pick two or three, two or four, two or five, you can probably go and offer that for Tannehill straight up, and the ADP backs that. And at one hundred two, you're getting a lot on top of Ryan Tannehill for the one hundred two. Oh yeah. I mean, if you, if you were talking, we're at the 110 and Kenny Pickett's there, I still think you probably get plus on top of Ryan Tano for Kenny Pickett in most yeah. leagues. But it, but if you're at the you're 102 right. and you're desperate enough to where you're like, I need to take Kenny Pickett, my my quarterback room is gross. Yeah, that's not the move because you can get a, you can get a 23 first and Ryan Tannehill for the 102 in a second. That gets done. Someone in your league is taking that deal. To to put a button on this Ryan Tannehill talk, talking about Kenny Pickett going as QB 22 in DLF ADP but he is 20 spots ahead of him in overall, so almost two rounds. So when you look at it that way, I think you can do Ryan Tannehill plus for Pickett. 